where does uh, the film start? Where do you guys uh, come in on this project? I first found Angela in 2015 or so mm -hmm. when she started to get a lot of media attention. Reached out to her and had a phone call, a few phone calls at that point. She introduced me to Birkus, Ivan Birkus, um, and we started developing a sizzle reel, which would then uh, turn into the finance for the project. So we filmed in small increments from about 2015 to 2020 um, over the course of many years. When we finally did have finance, Maria Bukanina came on as uh, co-director and producer um, and was in Russia during the war when I couldn't be out there, um, filled full time with them and then traveled and lived with them throughout Asia uh, over the course of roughly a three year period. And then we're releasing the film now in tw top of 2024. So that's seven years in the making. Uh, and Ivan and Angelo, what you all do is so uh, kind of beyond what I can even think of. Uh, but it is like dangerous stuff. And so in the beginning and sort of talking about how to film it, like, are you figuring that all out up front? Or was that an evolving conversation of how do we capture? And I'm sure you all had feedback for how uh, this film could capture what you all do in scaling these, the tallest buildings in the world, yeah. Вопрос в том, как мы работали вместе, учитывая, какие опасные вещи вы делаете, как мы договорились в самом начале, как, как пойдет процесс. Do you want me to answer that? Yeah, they can answer, you can answer. Okay. When we started, we had uh, a serious conversations with them, with their families. We wanted to make sure that we don't interfere with what they do, because it is pretty dangerous. Um, they are obviously very well trained and experienced. They know what they're doing. They have unbelievable sense of, you know, um, balance. And when you see them doing stuff on the ledges of rooftops, we didn't want to be near them, not to distract them, not to be in their way. So we um, developed a pretty rigorous safety protocol where we agreed the distance we we're going to keep uh, with them and we can talk to them when they're doing stuff at the very um, dangerous spots. So, a lot of cinematography that's extreme is done by them themselves, and we would film with them on more steady grounds. Um, and then um, there's a, a lot of stuff was done by us staying nimble and just being, we're trying to be one crew together, not a big you know, film crew roll it after the characters. We're gonna have to be a nimble unit together. You two have really developed this art form, and so were you like showing them a, sort of new camera techniques that you were trying or sort of shot ideas yourselves because um, it's already something you think about in the work that you do yeah так как вы разработали эту вид искусства это как форму арта показывали ли вы съемочной группе какие-то новые приемы новые технологии способы съемки подсказывали углы с которых можно хорошо снимать честно говоря мы подсказывали друг другу я думаю прям мы что-то джеффу джефф нам uh, я даже не вспомню сейчас, но Гел, ты помнишь, что тут прямо какую-то особенную фишку, которую мы подсказали? Прикольно. Uh, mm, а, да, я помню, я помню. Некоторые вещи, да, мы подсказывали, такие как, uh, например, нам выдали GoPro и сказали поставить, uh, по-моему, среднюю шир широту кадра. Я говорю, нет, это должен быть супер широкий кадр, потому что тогда будет uh, именно uh. утягивать кадр вниз. Команда согласилась, мы сделали это. Потом мы также некоторые вещи... Uh, подсказ... Наоборот, нам команда подсказывала. Мы привыкли к короткому формату, потому что мы все-таки больше в Инстаграме живем. Команда сказала, нет, нам не пойдет, снимайте 40 минут, час, а какой-то маленький шот. И, в общем, мы так друг друга учили. А еще мы научили их прятать камеру правильно, незаметно, отсекретить. Uh, they're saying it's been a collaborative process. We've been communicating both ways with each other. Uh, for example, one of the examples Angela told, um, told right now is that they had GoPros to film for us. So we were setting GoPros for a certain like medium angle. And she'd say, no, no, when you guys get on a rooftop, uh, if you, you need a wide angle for us to be looking down with the GoPros on us, because the wider angle is going to give you a more drastic feeling of the height and the depth of the drop. So she was really monitoring to make sure we all got our angles right. But of course, if you go too wide an angle, you're inside the staircase and you start getting the fisheye factor. So she was really good at st staying on top of the angles for us. And then um, her other example was that tr normally, traditionally, they used to do in short format. You know, they're in Instagram. So they like it. one perfect shot, get it done, set it up, and you're done. So we had to 
um, learn together how different the long format is from the short format. And mm -hmm. they realized finally that it's not the perfect shot we're looking for, but we're also looking for real ups and downs of relationship and dirty shots and dirty emotions, you know, they would normally try to avoid showing on camera. So we've grown together in this process in, in both the, when it comes to coverage of rooftoping activities, but also when it, when it comes to coverage of a real relationship in progress as it happens. Yeah. And sort of working on this, uh, there's the time aspect too, but this is also a very international film. Did it feel like the way you filmed it changed like country to country, location to location? Такая международная съемка, мы были в разных странах, были ли какие-то э, особенности между тем, как снимать в одной стране или в другой? Hmm. Yeah, structurally, the first act of the film is sort of the backstory. It's the meeting the original competition as rivals, and then the courtship and the developing the development of the romance and their brand. Most of that is archival, so the editing style is much faster. We're moving through time at a at a quicker pace. There's a lot more music and style. I mean, it's it's fun and playful. Um, we we borrow from Angela's childhood, the circus, as one of our like dominant aesthetics in that first 30 minutes. And then we really dive into more of a true cinema verite approach over the course of the last three or so years of the story, which is the bulk of Act Two into Act Three. Stylistically, we return in Act Three, the very end in the in the sort of aftermath section. We return to that very stylish, fast-paced cutting. But the, uh, the, the obstacles, the authenticity, um, that's all the verite stuff over the course of basically 2020 to 2023. Mm -hmm. um, and country-wise, it was... It was it, yeah, I mean, that aligned country by country, right? Because yeah. it was the leaving of Russia um, that really started the present-day narrative. Yeah. Um, so Thailand, Malaysia um, were primarily cinema verite. Yeah. Um, countries like, well, Russia, for example, um, we did a little verite, but a lot of that was quicker pace. A lot of that was archival. Um, China, uh, a number of the other places where they had done some of their earlier climbs, that fits into that Act One section. Yeah. Um, this is more than just work. You all are putting your lives on the line. But I think a fascinating aspect in watching it is what it kind of has to say about sort of the influencer space. Have you gotten any feedback on that? Because there is a reality of like, this is your art, but this is also something that you make money on. And I feel like we really see the challenge of that. We're like kind of extreme putting your life on the line to provide kind of entertainment on social media in some form of like So that's best answered by them, I yeah. think. Uh, а как, как реагируют ваши подписчики на то, чем вы занимаетесь? Потому что поня мы понимаем, что для вас это то, что вы любите делать, то, что, то, что вы тем, чем вы хотите заниматься, это настоящее ваше увлечение, но при этом вы на этом тоже можете зарабатывать и зарабатываете. Мы видим в фильме, что это тоже сопряжено с тем, что вы можете, что вы продаете эти кадры да, за деньги. Какие, эм, как реагируют люди на это? Что вам говорят в сетях в ответ на ваши... На, на вашу активность, на то, что вы постите. Можно я расскажу? Конечно. Да. А ты же говорил? Нет, нет. А, ну скажи ты. Да, нет, да, я же говорю. Окей. Мы поделим этот вопрос. Изначально, когда я начинала вести свой инстаграм и делать эти публикации, было очень много хейта. Почти каждый день писали, что ты творишь, ты можешь умереть, зачем ты вообще это транслируешь. Было очень много негатива, но... После того, как а, залетела моя фотография, этот момент показан как раз-таки в фильме, а, аудитория очень резко поменялась. У меня пришла моя аудитория, которая, наоборот, видит в этом искусство, видит в этом арт, мое выражение. И особенно очень любят женщины меня. Я не знаю, многие женщины пишут мне в Инстаграме, что мой арт дает им большую поддержку. Так что сейчас так к моему искусству, к нашему искусству относится. The, when I started first, uh, uh, she says there was a lot of hate online. There was a lot of uh, very angry comments. People were saying, why are you doing this? You're risking your life. What's the point? Why are you promoting this sort of risk to others? And then uh, at some point uh, when Angela's, uh, there's a moment in the film where we show that her first shot became, uh, you know, uh, when viral, her yeah. audience came. People came that wanted to follow her. Yeah. So now they're mainly all supportive. And she says the majority of her fans online are women. And the women write to her and say that she's inspiring them to 
you know, to pursue their passions as well. Маша, я добавлю, mm-hmm. что вообще изначально к нам действительно относились как к преступникам каким-то, mm-hmm. потому что в России вообще это движение руфинг, оно очень известное, оно, как правило, связано с, ну, как в фильме говорил, с mm-hmm. пьяницами, с дестроем и так далее. Вот, мы себя к этому не относили никогда, мы всегда старались как-то аккуратно этого избежать, повесить замок, как в фильме так и говорилось, собственно. А, вот, ну и умозаключения пока что нет. Мы всегда видели в этом искусство. Мы, they... мы всегда к этому относились, да, как искусство. И со временем mm-hmm. пришли нужные люди. They, they treat it as an art form, and been, uh, over the, courses, uh, the course of several years, the fans that are there now, uh, they, they see it as art, they understand that this is art. Иван said when they he started, um, this kind of movement was pretty widely known in Russia. There was a lot of coverage in Russia of that as just pure trespass and vandalism, teenagers trying to drink and risking their lives for nothing. And that's why the attitude was super negative uh, in the beginning. But over the course of, of this time, these two are known to have developed this into an art form and, and be persistent with it and be consistent. And they have their own fandom that's mostly supportive these days for them. Yeah, I guess, how do you stay focused and do you have, like, uh, strategies maybe to stay focused? Because especially with you two, like, this is a two or die situation, so you really have to kind of stay on climbing, even though, like, you are filming a movie on two different levels. Yeah. I mean, I, I would just say that that was the central challenge of this project, is there was nothing more important than the, than everyone's safety. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they're way more experienced than any of our crew, uh, but there's still safety concerns with what they're doing. They're doing the craziest stuff. Then there's the crew. And to have that um, in your mind at the same time, you're trying to focus on the content of the story and how it's developing. At the same time, you're trying to stay back so that the the footage you're capturing is authentic, Mm -hmm. that you're not manipulating it or you're not artificially forcing it into a direction it doesn't want to go in. Mm -hmm. And then most of the time we didn't have permission where we were filming. So there was also uh, the danger of law enforcement. So it was a lot to be juggling during production. And in some ways it was a relief to get into post and had to not have people, um, everyone was safe, no one had been injured and we could then really just, so as we said, take our focus from the fear of falling from heights and then retrain it to be the fear of falling in love.